Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary folks. Hello, I'm Gaby Calderos, and today I want to talk to you about social labels, specifically why they're against equality. Comedian William Claude Dukenfield once said, it ain't what they call you, it's what you answer to. And I have to say, I'm 100% right behind them. I don't think he was joking about this one. I believe the only person that can define you is yourself and no one, and I mean no one, should ever make you feel otherwise. Unfortunately, that is not our current situation at all. Even though society has come a long way fighting for human rights and equality, there is still room for social improvement and change. Take it from me, I spent the majority of my childhood and the entirety of my teenage years, surrounded by social media, and not only a massive exchange of memes, but a massive exchange of world news as well. And because of that, I have witnessed the impact of certain issues, such as these silly little things called social labels, which mainly have to do with your race, your wealth, your personality, and even your sexuality. I'm sure we've all heard of them, right? And maybe we've all used them, not in a positive way, and we really don't need them. Still, we choose to hold on to them, ignoring the negative impact they have in our lives, as if they were any benefit. But why? Well, let me tell you something. The other day, I scheduled a therapy appointment with my psychologist, Gabriela Valderas. And as soon as I walked into her office, I said to her, Today, you're not going to have to hear any whining about my life. I need to know everything there is to know about social labels. I'm doing a talk about them for school. And after a little expression of relief, which I totally understand, fair enough, she told me everything she knew about them. And these are the few things that really stuck with me about what she said. In social psychology, stereotypes are an overgeneralized belief about a certain group of people. And throughout our lives, people attach labels to us. And those labels reflect and affect how other people think about our identities as well as what we think about ourselves. Now hear me out. Labels are not always negative. They may be useful to reflect positive characteristics, set useful expectations, and even provide meaningful goals into our lives. I'm a great example of this. Ever since I started my academic journey, there I was, three-year-old me, first year of kindergarten. I totally aced it. And I had always been labeled as a quiet, smart kid, sometimes even a nerd. And I liked it. I took it as a compliment because it meant that other people noticed my effort and I felt as if it was worth it. Even last year, when my grades went down, and I mean terribly down, I knew it wouldn't last for long because I was a smart kid and I would get back on track. And so I did. I believed in myself because other people did. And by getting back to my usual pace, I felt as if I were getting back to myself, the person other people helped me for. Now, just so we're clear, I'm sure that my experience with social labels is practically nothing compared to the way society treats and views people of color or Muslim people, or the queer community. I recognize I'm in a position of privilege. After all, I'm a cisgender, asexual, white person. But what does my sexuality and my gender identity and even my race have to do with all this? Well, stereotypes simplify and justify social reality. They have potentially powerful effects on how other people view and perceive each other. As a result, stereotypes lead to discrimination in places like work or school or simply going out on the street and interacting with other people. Like um, as I told you before, I was labeled as a nerd. And a few years ago, back when we were not in a global pandemic, I remember being out in social outings like parties and people would have a hard time realizing or acknowledging that I had an entire personality outside of school. 
outside of those four concrete walls we call middle school. You see, when people have their own idea of you, they make little to no effort to change that. And it definitely made making new acquaintances a bit more challenging. Whenever I would approach someone, they already thought they knew that I was boring or stiff or that I only talked about school. And that doesn't sound appealing at all. What happened here is that someone else had already told me these things and they just believed them. But the people that did give themselves the opportunity to get to know me would usually tell me something like this later on in our friendship. Oh, I never thought we could be such friends. I thought you were super boring. Or that I was nothing the way people described me. You see what's going on here? I got upset because I asked myself, why does my academic persona have to do all this impact in my personal life? I mean, it doesn't define me. Now, while such generalizations about groups of people may be useful when making quick decisions, all based on assumptions, of course, they may be erroneous when applied to a particular individual and are among the reason for prejudice attitudes, like saying, all Mexicans are lazy. No, we're not. I mean, I spend around 10 weeks of my life preparing for this talk. Or that all black people are criminals. No, they're absolutely not. Or that queer people are sinners. That is a terribly wrong assumption to make. You see, what's going on here is that we're internalizing hate towards certain groups of people due to the fact that they're different from us and we decide to generalize a certain fact or quality about them to determine the way we treat them. Social labels carry on to be a serious issue on our society. People think bad mouthing or giving names is okay. I mean, sure, when you're with your friends, it's funny and you, and you may feel part of the group, right? But when you're being targeted, that's when you start to realize it isn't a joke anymore, and it has a negative impact. Everybody has fallen for this more than once, especially in this generation, where it is incredibly easy to find information based on these accusations, and they're treated as facts. But in, the, but in these times, it's when we should break the cycle and acknowledge that this type of behavior is no good. So what can we do about this? What is the solution I bring to you right now? My team and I came with three possible solutions. Number one is to educate other people about the subject. Let's pretend you're walking down the street and you hear a person give another one a label. The first thing that you shouldn't do is internalize these beliefs. And second will be to correct them, not only by telling them to shut up or that they're wrong, but educating them on the subject. As I mentioned previously, I believe the only person that can define you is yourself. So the second solution would be to not take it personal. Ignorance is an enemy, even to its owner, and correcting the people that mistreated you would be much better than any other comeback you may have up your sleeve. And the third solution, and this is direct for parents and adults as well, is teaching the next generations about these subjects, social labels. Show them how they work, the outcomes they may have. Maybe they're positive, maybe they're not. But teaching them how to not cross a bridge of being disrespectful. I mean, these type of accusations could even cause a genocide. Remember this guy, Adolf Hitler? Yeah. The guy that literally started World War II. Well, he had this extremely racist belief. He believed every Jewish person in the world was the enemy, and he labeled them as such for other people too. So bad that his life's purpose was literally to end their entire race, and he convinced an entire country to do the same thing. And that is exactly what I'm trying to prevent here. If we set the right example by ignoring these superficial beliefs and recognizing that we are all loved and appreciated the same, 
we can eventually stop the use of social labels. They bring nothing positive to us. All they do is bring wars, hate crimes, discrimination, and even police brutality, which is exactly what we're trying to fight against for. So why don't you come with me and stop social labeling? Thank you.